Hi everyone, Tucker Jobs, and in this video I'm going to part with you a little bit of knowledge uh, that obviously I, I use in my games, or if uh, you might you might know some, you might not know some, a little bit of guides of how to do tactics, uh, import them, that is with training and stuff like that, a few little hints or tips about the game that you may not really do, uh, but can make a massive difference, can, can massively help uh, your career your save or or just the whole point of having fun because at the end of the day it's just a game so first up loans loans are one of those things that i'm guilty of it all right only the last couple of years i've started actually using loans uh, is getting them in some people don't like getting loan players in big club or small club all right big clubs it's more of a case of do you have a massive injury do you need to replace that spot you don't have the money this season so you yeah, gotta look for some players you gotta look for some loans because you haven't got the money anymore all right you can afford the wages but not the transfer uh, and, and sometimes you can get some good loans you can get some great players now in this case i'm wolves all right so yeah all right left back gets injured marcus alonso i can bring him in on a loan deal for the season just to cover yourself uh, until you get a replacement a permanent replacement and a permanent guy that's going to come into the team and obviously change things for the better but for now boom loan deals do not underestimate the power of loans i'm going to say it again loans <laughs> If you're a smaller club as well, it gives you the opportunity to loan top team players that you will not in a cat and hell's chance of getting in the first season, second season, third season, whatever, whatever league you're in, Vanarama North, uh, League One, League Two. End of the day, you might be a League One team and you'll be able to get top, Premier, uh, top championship or maybe lower Premier League youngsters who are far better than your players. But they're coming to you because the big teams need them to get the experience of, uh, of matches. And you're the perfect club to do that in. Uh, and, and once again, you get a little bit high, you get into the championship, and you get start getting some quality, quality Premier League players on loan. And it's even better in a few years' time on the game, you start getting regens. Everyone knows regens. Everyone loves regens. I love regens. All right. Um... And they're the kind of players that look absolutely insane, especially if they play for Man City, for Chelsea, for, for Tottenham, Arsenal, the big, the big teams, the big six. And those regens can come down to your club in the championship, maybe even League One, and rip it up. Absolutely rip it up. And they make all the difference, especially for smaller teams in climbing the league. Because we all know, when you're a small team, you've got a decent tactic, you've got a decent go at it. I mean, you're, you're an all right team, you're predicted pretty high. Only takes three, in my opinion, three players can make a whole lot of difference. Sometimes even that one, one amazing goal scorer that you've loaned from a top or a higher league team, then yeah, can absolutely smash it. My go-to player to loan, uh, I don't think it was in FM20, I can't remember which one it was now, it was uh, Callum Gribbin. Remember Callum Gribbin? Man U? Yeah, midfielder or attacking centre. I used to play him, obviously, with my lower league teams. I loaned him first. I managed to get them him on, on, a, on, a, on a free at some point a few years later. But I loaned him because I think he had 17. 17 free kick taken. And he probably won me 25, 30 points just on his own, just from his free kicks. And it was absolutely incredible. So, yeah, loans. Don't underestimate them. They're very important and can help you massively. Next little tip, next little hint uh, to go on probably is one that doesn't really get looked at is the player agents. Now, what I mean by player agents, I'll go to Meza Ozil, all right? So Meza Ozil, information, he is managed or his agent is Scott Shaw. Yeah, Scott Shaw's got a lot of players under his belt, all right? It's up to him, uh, basically, in contract negotiations. And if you want to save yourself a little bit of money or you want a little bit of insight of what this guy's like, obviously, in the future... It says here, look, attributes, agent attributes. Shaw is known to prefers clients to remain at their club uh, whilst also being regarded as a very patient negotiator. And that's just saying to you basically that sometimes when you turn down an offer from a club, um, straight away, player comes in, agent comes in, I want more money from the player, right? He, he should have gone to that club, blah, 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 blah. 
you're not happy, you end up giving them more money. You're not, and and you, don't, you didn't really want to, but you didn't want to lose the player either. Uh, but some managers, or some agents, sorry, uh, will obviously show you a little bit of insight of what they're going to be like, and this is the case. So at least you know this guy, he's going to want his player to remain at the club for as long as possible. Um, probably explains why Ozil was at Arsenal for as long as he was. If if we're going by the game's uh, attributes, that is. Um, but he's also a patient negotiator. And by a patient negotiator, it means that when we're going for Ozil uh, as a transfer, obviously make an offer, we get the offer, suggest terms, okay, we're all good. We are here at the contract. So start negotiations. You can see right here already, patience is high, which means you can spend a little while negotiating with them, trying to get the best deal possible. So let's give them an important player, and this is what he's looking at. Chances are we're not going to be able to drop it down that much because it is Ozil. Probably should have picked a different player, but the same effect applies. Just don't buy Ozil, basically. All right, that's the next tip. Don't buy Ozil. It costs too much. It costs way too much. Um, but what I'm trying to get to here is look at their attributes uh, and look at their basically what they're going to be like. Let's have a look at Ruben Neves. All right. So if we go to the information about Ruben Neves, Jao Carvalho is his agent. Carvalho prefers to put the happiness of his clients above monetary gain during negotiations. Now, this is telling you basically that when you come to the contract negotiations, his whole point, his whole attribute is geared towards getting his client the best weekly wage possible so he will always try and get high amounts of money for his player but he won't be asking a lot for the agent fee so you might be able to play around a little bit with that you might be able to lower a little bit of his agent fee because that's not what he cares about he cares about his player yeah you might have to spend obviously decent money on the player but you can save a little bit of money on the agent fee and over the course of obviously so many seasons and so many players might have this um agent with the same attributes it all it all amounts up a little bits of money and the other version of this is that he wants monetary gain and he doesn't really care about his client so that's the other way around all right you give him a big chunk of an agent fee and you can maybe get that weekly wage down just a little to save some money all right and then there's a uh, there's all the ones where you've got see if i can find some uh, information let's have a look melissa pace all right so pose been known uh, to lord her clients to all the clubs so lord her clients is basically show off show off her players show off her clients to all the clubs so chances are you may get, be getting people coming in for these players more regularly because you've got their agent always saying PSG. Look at this guy. Look at this guy over here. He's pretty good, isn't he? Do you want him? Do you want him? Man you. Look at this guy. Do you want him? No? Alright then. And it's one of them. Uh, so just have a look. Just have a look at the agent's attributes and maybe it will save you a little bit of money or it could save you a little bit of heartache as well. Alright? If you've got one of their agents always asking for monetary gain and player money and they haven't got a lot of patience and they are laudering their uh, clients to other clubs, then you might be in for obviously hefty amounts of money being spent on a player agent fees for, for years to come on contract renegotiations or obviously uh, trying to keep your player from other clubs because the, their agent just keeps laudering them out to everyone else in the world. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's uh, something to look at maybe. Right, so next one is um, basically a scouting tip. It's a scouting tip that I use quite a lot for, for mainly the lower teams, really, because I always struggle with what kind of players to bring in, obviously, to fit your role. And that comes to the director of football. Now, obviously, you need a director of football, first place, but it works for top teams, smaller teams, and I'm with Wolves. I'm, the whole point of this, I'm just going to be Wolves because they're just the standard Premier League team. So request director of football suggestions when looking for players. Normally they do bring in or they do obviously advertise players that pretty much would suit your team uh, quality wise all right they're not gonna if you say i want a midfielder they're not going to show you a midfielder from the vanarama north league all right they will show you a top class midfielder that pretty much matches your team and um, so raul pedro silva okay assistant manager um handles incoming transfer not bothered about that i'm going to request a director of football suggestion so let's say transfer. I want to transfer. I want a striker. What kind of striker do I want? Well, most of the time I play advanced forward. So I want an advanced forward striker. Would you suggest 
a striker to me, my man, director of football. There we go, Odson Eddard. I um, don't know if I'm saying that right. I think I've said it wrong before. Um, quality striker. I know he's a quality striker. Always bangs in the goals. And for Celtic, 8-1 to apps, 45 goals. Doing absolutely incredible. Uh, Dembele. All right. Again, a great striker. We know this guy can do the jobs. Because you, if you've seen my videos, you've seen my tactics tests. Every time I'm Leon, this guy bangs a lot in. And then Jao Pedro. Once again, a decentish striker. Um, or attacking centre, whichever position you want to go in. So... You use your director of football to pretty much recommend a few players that anything. Oh, hang on, yeah, okay, he looks he looks pretty good. I'll, I'll go in for him once again. Transfer. You want a midfielder? This midfielder, deep line playmaker, suggest a couple for me. You got Hamza, nice, brilliant, brilliant deep line playmaker. Callum McGregor, yeah, I can see him doing pretty well. Well, especially at Wolves, it doesn't necessarily have to be a top world-class player that's going to play every game or everything it could be a nice backup for you uh, for wolves not too bad calvin phillips oh yeah I, I i rate him proper rate calvin phillips i think is a lot better than what his attributes uh, actually say but once again the director of football gives you pretty good suggestions when looking for players and you're a bit stuck on who to buy and it does the same with end of contract free transfers and loan deals as well so i want a loan deal i want an attacking midfielder let's have a look who who is asking though so we've got Drampy, manuel lanzini and smith row all right so yeah the loans tend to not be obviously as good because the loan deals most of the times it's youngsters looking to get match experience from the bigger clubs but this guy's great, all right? For a loan deal, for someone that might be able to bulk up that left-hand side if you're a bit thin on that side, a uh, decent substitute for Wolves, all right? Lanzini, again, a decent substitute as the attacking centre, and Joanne P, uh, pretty much similar. So use your director of football. He could give you some great, great uh, suggestions when it comes to players who are on free, loan, uh, or um, transfer listed. Now, the next little bit of help that you may need in your games or that you may struggle with is uh, tactics. Tactics or training or, or those kind of schedulings and um, uh, formations that you might struggle with that aren't doing so well. So, uh, the next tip is import help. Import the help. And what I mean is in my channel, in obviously YouTube, you've seen the videos, I do a lot of tactics videos, a lot of tactics tests. I do them. So... A lot of people enjoy it when, when they're doing well in the game. Regardless of if people are saying, you shouldn't download tactics, it's not your own creation, it's, it's cheating. It's not cheating. You need help, you want to have fun. It's a game at the end of the day. So you import tactics, you import training to make your save and your experience football manager better. Uh, and one of them, big one for me, obviously I can't on it as, my, as a content creator because that's, that's a big bulk of my channel, is uh, important tactics for help. There's loads of tactics out there. They have been tested. They have been tried and they have been found worthy. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's obviously you just have to find one that fits your team. Hopefully it works. Obviously the never guarantees with tactics testing unless you test it over a 20 season period and then find the averages and, and all that kind of stuff. But on a general basis, most tactic testing is pretty uh, pretty solid if it fits the team that you want to use that tactic with and so let's go through uh, obviously the important of the tactic because i've had some messages before where they don't know how to do it so they just copy obviously all the instructions that's the reason why i give all the manual instructions in my videos because people don't know how to import the tactics or obviously they're playing on xbox torture different console where they are unable to so let's start here so we're on this screen you've downloaded the tactic it's gone to your downloads what do you do straight here look load Go to load and straight away for me, obviously, because I use it a lot because of my content, straight up there. But on a normal case, it would obviously go to your locations, uh, your public files or anything like that. Well, all my tactics go to the downloads. So all I've got to do is go to my location, which is obviously my files, downloads. And here are all the tactics pretty much that you've downloaded. You're probably not going to have as many as me because... I do tactics tests. This is one of my main points of the channel. But let's just say you want the F9 Viola. It's a tactic you can find, obviously, uh, in a lot of places because it did it very well. And uh, yeah, so you've downloaded it. You want it. You load it. Boom. It's changed your whole mentality. You're in possession. Your team instructions. Your player instructions. It sets you. If, if they've changed it, it would have done all your set pieces. Everything to hopefully make your team better, make you produce some decent results. And uh, yeah. 
Now, another bit of help you can get is obviously importing training schedules. Now, there's one on my Discord that uh, FC Codoni is gladly shared uh, on the training and scheduling, where obviously if you've got two match week, a one match week, or a zero match week, they're all three are there. And again, you can import them. And in this case, all you have to do is go to your schedules, select schedule, um, custom schedules, import schedule, and here we go on the downloads as usual because that's what you are doing. You're downloading these files, so the places that they would go is downloads, unless you have set it to a different file and then just find that file. So, in this case, this is a one match week, all right? So, this actually requires you to obviously keep looking um, at how many games you're playing in the schedule, but that's that's all a part of football manager. If you want the full immersive experience of being a manager, obviously, you've got to look after everything as a football manager would do. Um, so in this case, this is a Codoni's one match week. So what you got to do is load it up and it will give you that one match. Let's get rid of that. Am I on it? Yeah, it will give you that one match week. So you've got Monday to Sunday um, and then obviously the training that you've got there. Uh, and they really do help. All right, a lot of people I've seen on messages and stuff like that say training can make a massive difference if you can keep everyone fit, everyone happy, everyone basically learning and training in the correct things and, and yeah i think uh, i think again importing help is is massive and like with tactics you could import the f9 viola that doesn't mean you've got to use the exact f9 viola you, you might think well i like that tactic i like the defensive capabilities of that tactic so i'm going to download it but i'll change these front three so there's no harm in tweaking already successful tactics i just you might want to do that all right there we go you've made a tweet you've made a little contribution to the tactic and further on down the line more tweaks more tweaks two three seasons down you might get a couple of wingers that aren't quite inverted anymore so you'll change one i mean you'll turn him into a wing back he's now support he's moving there defensive winger you don't really want them to clash so this guy might become an inverted winger support he's going to start coming into this section you've got a wing back here before you know it, you've made a tactic. <laughs> and it's, I wouldn't say it's as easy as that, because in my opinion, I don't think it is, but you get the gist. You, you start understanding more and more once you put players in your roles, in your tactics, after importing the help. And that was another tip, obviously, and that may make your game enjoyable. Now, the final and most biggest tip or hint or just suggestion is have fun. At the end of the day, Football Manager is just a game, all right? It's just an escape from reality into something that you really enjoy and uh, you, you want to have fun. At the end of the day, games are there for you to enjoy yourself regardless of how other people do it. This is your game, your save, you paid for it, you do whatever you want. And one of those things is the editor, all right? If you are genuinely having a great time being a full-on manager, immersive and real, do it that way, all right? I do it that way. I don't use the editor too much, only really for content uh, creation, stuff like that. I don't use it in my games, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Some people say it is. No, no. At the end of the day, people can't tell you how to play a game when the whole point of a game is to have fun. And if it's fun to get Kylian Mbappe playing for Bolton, then why not? If it's fun getting a lower league team and giving them all the best uh, facilities that money can buy for free, because you've just edited it in, then do it, all right? If you want to change uh, Lionel Messi, make him 20 years old again, you can do it, all right? End of the day, it's this bad boy here, FM in-game editor. This can create so many fun little experiments that you can enjoy to your heart's content, and let's just try one of them. So we're on Bolton, all right, let's find Mbappe right here. And we just click this little button. You move to my club for free. He now plays for Bolton. He is going to absolutely rip it up in Bolton, let me tell you that. But you can change so many things. All right, you can move to other club, move players on loan. You can edit all the attributes. You can edit club attributes. You can edit the money, finances, age, contracts. So many things in the editor that can make Football manager, weird, quirky, fun, exciting, or right, anything basically that makes you enjoy the game as much as you want. It can, in some circumstances, obviously, if you really 
want to experience fulfillment or proper success in your own way um yeah don't use the editor all right the editor's there to make it fun to make it quirky to make a laugh to just just to basically think well yeah i've i've got the world's best team in the vanarama north i've just been promoted and we scored 800 goals yeah why not why not all right a lot of people use the in-game editor for making content it's how we do it um i've done it all right i've seen a lot of other people do it at the end of the day because you do it on wonder kids you do it so you can find out the potentials you can do loads of things you you can if you, if you want to limit yourself all right and just make it to a point where say i'm i'm wolves all right let's have a look at the development let's have a look at the under 18 so i've got this guy here campbell we know he's not going to be great all right because we would have heard of him by now so let's go to his attribute details and we know he has a potential ability of 151 well if we just do that Potential ability of 200, if you didn't know, was the highest potential in the game. Uh, it means that they're pretty much guaranteed to become a world-class player, all right, um, at some point if you obviously train them right, develop them right. But yeah, this guy now has a potential ability of 5 stars, 200, he will become a world force. So you can limit yourself and just make a couple of youngsters knowing that they're going to come into your team in a few years, absolutely insane. Uh, but once again... A lot of people obviously don't like doing it. Um, they have their own opinions about the in-game editor and how it ruins the game. I don't think it ruined the game. It, it might ruin their game because they don't want to use it. It's not going to ruin your game. All right? It's just up to you what you want to do. Um, so yeah, if you use it in moderation, if you use it to have fun, why not? In competitions, if you're, if you're bragging about how many goals this guy scored but then you think hang on a minute he's used the editor has made this guy absolutely insane it's not really showing off you're just showing off something you've created and um, which is what no one else can replicate unless they do the same thing yeah you can understand not using it but for your own enjoyment your own entertainment have fun have fun with it enjoy the game and do everything you want to do your way without anyone else telling you how, how you should do it because it's a game all right you have paid this you've paid the money to do it your own way yeah that's that they are pretty much all of the tips all the little hints or all the suggestions all right for me that i think would just makes it a little bit enjoyable makes it a little bit easier helps out a little bit uh, money wise tactic wise training wise player wise enjoyment wise and um, so yeah hopefully uh kind of enjoyed this video it's pretty much a different one to the ones i normally do so i, I don't really know how you're going to take it but i'm enjoying the game <laughs> that's basically the whole point uh so yeah hopefully you enjoyed it check out my other videos in the channel obviously there's a lot of tactics on there a few wonder kids and stuff like that and um, you might like them you might not it's a it all depends on how you uh, how you take it really so i'm tucker jobs thanks for watching see you later bye